Yeah. Okay, whiskey lovers around the world were in Groningen after the um, a night of revelry at the, uh, the the North Netherlands Whiskey Festival, and this is the morning after the night before, and uh, we're interviewing Jim Rutledge, who's master distiller of the, uh, the Four Roses Bourbon Distillery in uh, in Kentucky. And uh, we're in the cafe in, in, in Groningen. The kind people have allowed us to use the cafe. It's called the Oude Wacht, this cafe. And uh, welcome, Jim. Thank you for, for talking to us. And um, th this is your first trip to the Netherlands, right? It sure is. And uh, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. And uh, it's quite an honor and uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Okay, and uh, you know that, that uh, uh, Four Roses is the, the main selling bourbon in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, it, it's probably above uh, Maker's Mark and other such uh, bourbons uh, in the Netherlands. And recently I reviewed uh, your, your uh, single barrel uh, myself. It's on my own blog site and uh, I found it to be a, a lovely toffee and fudgy and have you got any plans to make uh, any new products like that? We, back in the U.S., we have uh, some limited editions, uh, usually one a year, a limited edition single barrel bourbon, generally in April or May of uh, the year. And then in September, we will uh, have a limited edition small batch, okay. uh, something special. We're the only bourbon distillery that actually distills and ages separately 10 recipes, uniquely different flavors of bourbon. And with 10 recipes, there's an infinite number of recipes that can be generated and put on the market. And uh, we go through, uh, it could be weeks or it could be months and months of uh, uh, com combining different uh, recipes. And when we hit something that's really good, we know we can stop there. And that's uh, the idea behind our small batch limited edition in September. Is that like, uh, and we call it mariage, the uh, French spelling uh, mm -hmm. of marriage. And uh, the idea is that one plus one is not one or two, but something special, four or five. And uh, you don't know until you try it. And that's uh, it's a challenge, it's a lot of fun. And of course, the single barrel limited edition is a lot of fun. But our main focus uh, in the US, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, are our three primary bourbons, our uh, standard yellow label bourbon, uh, our uh, single barrel and small batch bourbons. Okay. And um, uh, what, what, when you say single barrel, for people who don't know what that is, um, uh, what is it exactly? For, for the folks who don't know what a single barrel is, what does that mean? For Four Roses, we use one of our 10 recipes. It's very high in rye content, rye grain, small flavor grain. We use 60% corn, 35% rye, gives it a bit of a spiciness mm -hmm. relative to other bourbons, and then 5% uh, malt barley for the conversion process. And we look at that recipe and then we super select the barrels. Uh, I'd selected the first barrel that, uh, of all the 10 recipes we have, that we would use for single barrel more than 10 years ago, about 12 years ago, I think, in 98. And we kept samples, because there's no two barrels alike. Every barrel will have its own fingerprint of flavor. And it's our challenge to get as close as we can to the original recipe. And uh, so we look at hundreds of barrels, and we try to match that first first barrel as close as we can. Every one of our bottles is identified with the barrel location on it. Okay. And when a barrel is selected, we uh, process it for bottling. When the bottling is finished, we shut the bottling line down. We uh, write, hand write in uh, the identification of the next barrel and start the line back up. It's a barrel at a time and each uh, barrel is identified on the bottles uh, My goodness. where the barrel came from. That's a lot of work. And of course, you've got uh, an, an, an enormous amount of uh, wood in, in, or, or oak in the United States that you can source from. Uh, is it a, a particular part that you source your wood from? We use an uh, uh, independent stave company. They have uh, uh, cooperage plants in Missouri and Kentucky. Mm -hmm. They also have uh, plants in Europe, I think in France. 
Okay. I know they're, they're the largest uh, barrel company in the world, whether it be bourbon barrels, wine barrels, or any type of spirit barrels. And right now they're getting uh, their uh, uh, the wood from uh, Missouri, okay. close to their Cooper's plant in Missouri. And the, excuse me, the, uh, uh, at times they, they will spend several years in one area. Uh -huh. And when they leave the area, they will may perhaps use no more than 20% of the, the trees in that area. They will leave for more than uh, 20 years. They won't come back to that particular area for 20 years. Then when they come back, there are more trees the second ah. time around than there were the first time. Okay. Uh, so there's a, a plentiful uh, amount of trees. It could be from Missouri or Arkansas. There's white oak trees in Kentucky, the Carolinas. But right now, the trees are being sourced from Missouri. Okay, and, oh, and it's a very sustainable system which you have of... of it is. <laughs> uh, it was, that was a concern for many years that uh, because a white oak tree takes 75 to 100 years to mature, and will we eventually run out of white oak? Yeah. And the answer to that is no, we won't. Uh, the way they manage the, the forest and uh, uh, only taking a select amount of trees and leaving ample space uh, and time to regenerate the, the growth. And uh, there's no danger of that. No. <clears throat> and again, for the, uh, for the folk that, uh, the, this is, uh, the, the Netherlands is, is single malt Scotch whiskey country, basically. There's a big following of single malt whiskey. Although bourbon's getting more and more of a following. Uh, uh, people usually know what a, what a pot still is. Uh, what type of still is used uh, for, for making bourbon? We use uh, two stills, the column still, it's called a beer still, mm -hmm. and uh, our second step of distillation is a pot still. Uh, we call it a doubler as the second step of distillation, that's the only reason it's called a doubler, but it is a pot still. The, uh, the column still, uh, there's two sections of the column still. Yeah. Uh, the bottom section, the separating trays, uh, the vapor on each, above each tray is an alcohol or a conjun or an alcohol flavor. Yep. that vaporizes at a different temperature. It gets cooler as it goes up the still. Yeah. So we separate the alcohol and the flavors in the bottom 80% of the still, and then the top of the still is a rectification uh, part of the still. In fermentation, we generate about 8% alcohol. We separate that alcohol in the bottom part of the still, then we increase that in the top part of the beer still to about 65%. That's the way we operate our still uh, alcohol, and then we increase that another ten percent, uh, another five percent in the pot still. May okay. I ask a question, Joe? Yes, yeah, sure. So, as a matter of fact, you are triple distilling it instead of double distilling. If I understand. it's uh, in essence, uh, uh, if you were to relate it to pot still distillation, the uh, the column still acts as the first two pot stills. The, the bottom section will separate the alcohol from the grains, uh, the corn, the rye, the malt, uh, yeast, and some of the water. And the top half will separate then the alcohol from water. The water comes down the still, the uh, alcohol goes up. So the beer still itself acts as the first two pot stills, and then we have the third pot still. In essence, it is uh, you can relate it to triple pot still distillation. So you have an analyzer and a rectifier in the same column? That's correct. Ah. Thanks for explaining. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. And thank you very much, Jim, for giving me some of your time. It was really an honor to speak to you. And uh, well, for you viewers that uh, that know this blog, uh, uh, again, this is Jim Rutledge, <coughs> master distiller of uh, the Four Roses, the very famous Four Roses Bourbon Company in Kentucky, in the United States. We are talking this morning. Uh, it is the morning after the night before, and uh, speaking for myself, uh, I have a mouth like a, a camel driver's sand shoe this morning. And, <coughs> and uh, so, uh, anyway, it was a lovely talking to you, Jim. Thank you very much indeed. It's certainly my pleasure okay. to be here. Thank you. Okay, bye.